Welcome back, Holo State Podcast family. I'm Matt Hardiman. I'm sitting here again with Alex Cottingham, and we've pre- previously talked about sleeping well. We've talked about eating clean, and we are finally here to talk about how to get swole, how to look right, and how to move often, which is habit number three. Alex, how are you doing, man? Dang, sign me up for that program. I want to get swole, look good, and move often, whatever that entails. Well, hey, I actually have a podcast coming out. I'll send you an episode uh, free of charge. Dang, really? Yeah, I'll, subscribe. I'll shoot you away. I've got a book coming I need to, out. I need to subscribe to that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alex, today we're talking about moving often. I'm excited. I love to move. What's your favorite dance move if you're on a dance floor? Oh, they're My playing gosh. they're playing some some hits they're playing some bangers and you start moving you start grooving what's your go to dance move i know your go to dance move i don't know if this is what you're going to say in front of a public audience but i know the exact move that you do because i saw it Easter Sunday at the oh Church. Oh my night gosh. of worship. Oh my gosh. That is not my go to dance move. Matt is going to say the uh dad step chicken bob head with the <laughs> yeah. clap on beat where I'm just the dad step chicken bob. I mean, is that not what it is? It's, that is an extremely accurate way to put it. Um Matt thinks I am the whitest person in the entire world and has no dance moves, but here, here I am here to tell you that he is 1,000% correct. Right. I have no dance moves. I, I feel very uncomfortable dancing. I'm just so stiff. I have no finesse to me. So I would go uh, something like the old school sprinkler or the <laughs> uh, the underwater like uh, plug your nose and pretend you're underwater kind of deal. Like All the those ones that no one do, does no, anymore. No one does. No one's on TikTok doing the sprinkler. No <laughs> one's on TikTok doing the underwater scuba diver. I'm gonna start that honestly. I'm starting that one. I would join you. We can uh, we can put some uh, some Doja Cat behind it. Maybe I, some. Uh, What's the, who's another hot artist right now? You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> yeah. Alex is like, oh, uh, Chris Tomlin? <laughs> um, Phil Let's Wickham? Put, we could put some Chris Tomlin acoustic behind it, and I'll start whipping out some movements. But Anyways. Well, I'm, so, I'm Anyways. excited. I'm excited. I'm excited to talk about moving. I'm excited to talk about um, exercise. Um, I think one thing starting off to talk about, um, we mentioned it in the book, you mentioned in the book, and we talk about this often, but it's how our lifestyle has become so, it's like, what's the S word? It's so, Uh, so sedentary. sedentary. What a big word. Sedentary. Let's start that sentence over again. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so I'm excited to talk about moving. I'm excited to talk about, um, exercising. And I think one thing we talk about a lot, one thing you bring up in the book very often is, um, how, us as a culture and us as um, a society has gotten so sedentary. Um, and you actually say that sitting is the new smoking. So, Alex, what what, what was the last thing you smoked? Let's start there. <laughs> what, what what are you smoking these days, Alex? <laughs> I was not thinking you were going to go there. <laughs> I um, know. I got you. But the actually, truth be told, the one and only thing I've was ever it, was smoked. Was it legal? Is this legal? This I, is going see, out to a public I audience. I don't even know. Here's the thing. It just uh, I'll be – vulnerable and transparent with uh, with all of you the one and only time i smoked something was a cuban cigar down in the bahamas on my high school senior year missions trip were you of age um i mean i was 18 i don't know i think it was legal down there because what that's why we did it cubans live a um, different code they do they have different <laughs> different rule down there but the thing was my two buddies and i snuck out at like this one or two a.m to oh my gosh this is so this not is, where we were going initially but no I'm so but glad this we're this, about this story is worth <laughs> it and we sneak out when we're smoking these cuban cigars first time I've ever smoked of course i inhale and it's just like <laughs> it's just like terrible <laughs> and the thing was my mom was a chaperone on that trip and somehow word got out that we snuck out and it was 1 a.m and she's in the middle of sleep so she comes down into like the little pavilion area in front of the hotel and she starts like yelling at us like what are you guys doing like you you shouldn't be doing this like you're gonna get in so much trouble blah 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 and i have such a guilty conscience that i just start breaking down right there and i was like (laughs) i'm sorry i'm so sorry i'm the worst i feel so bad blah 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 and i just start bawling right there never gonna sin again never going to smoke ever again (laughs) and that scarred me um but no i have nothing against it but that was that's just such a 
funny and fond memory as I look back at it now because I was just so innocent, and that was that was the first thing that came to mind. But well, Alex, you're you're no longer a smoker, um, which is good news. That's true. You're a lover. You're not a fighter, but that's you do true. say that sitting is the new smoking. So let's talk about that a little bit. Why why would you say that sitting is the new smoking? What's the problem? Um, with sitting, how has sitting affected our everyday life? I'm we're sitting right now, talking. We are sitting right now. Maybe we should change our posture. You know what? You I'm know, actually gonna it. stand hey, up. Let's do it. We're if standing up, everybody. For you can't see this right now, but me and Alex are standing up, applying this rule. But why is it important that we just stood up, Alex? Um, we're gonna get into some of the mantras that I like to live by, which we are doing right now. Um, but the reason why. And again, this doesn't originate with me. This is this is more well known. You can even Google it that the quote is sitting as a new smoking. Because when you go back to I don't know the seventies, eighties, or whenever like smoking was much more of a culturally accepted thing, everyone did it. It was culturally accepted, but right. it was ultimately hurting you, right? right? So many people did it, but did, didn't mean it was right or didn't it mean it was healthy. You, yeah. Where everyone was smoking cigarettes, but now as time went on, we've been able to see how detrimental that was to our health. Right. Where now the mainstream media is like, whoa, whoa, smoking cigarettes can cause a bunch of respiratory diseases, illnesses, hardships, all that stuff. Right. But now when it comes to sitting, our culture is primed to sit in every single environment that we find ourselves in. We sit at home. We sit at work. We sit in the cars. We sit at the park bench. We sit um, watching our uh, our kids do gymnastic practice. We sit when we're waiting. We sit while we're eating. We sit uh, watching TV. We just are sit, 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 sitting and the thing is, though, when it comes to optimizing our health and becoming the truly healthiest person we possibly can be, sitting is not taking us in that direction that we want to go because it is a part, it's, it's a variable when it comes to chronic disease. And chronic disease are just those long term diseases that we have a hard time fighting that don't really work for us. It's kind of like heart disease or type 2 diabetes or um, like uh, high blood pressure, all those things. Those are correlated with a lot more levels of sitting. I mean, listen to this. The World Health Organization just ranked sedentary behavior as the fourth biggest preventable killer globally, wow. meaning that's 3.2 million deaths a year annually. Jeez. So, but the key word is preventable. Like, we can prevent a sedentary lifestyle, but our Wait, so they're saying that these diseases are a byproduct of being sedentary? Yes. Wow. But I will, I will note. It's not a one variable equation either. Right. It's not like, oh, you're going to sit and you're going to die, right? right, That's, right. It's not that black and white, but it is a very big attribute to it that not a lot of us are aware of, which is why sitting as a new smoking is kind of a thing because everyone's doing it. It's culturally acceptable, but it's hurting us more than we think. Right. So, And I kind of give some mantras that we can even get into as far as like some things we can think about about. Um, for example, omit the sit is what I like to say. Like anytime right, there's right, optional right. sitting, we can sit it, but it's not completely preventable. You need to sit on the train. You need to sit in your car to transport. You need in those big uh, office executive meetings where you're, it's important. Everyone's sitting around a business table. You're not going to be the weirdo standing in the corner. Hey guys, I don't sit. I'm sorry. I'm better than you guys. Like <laughs> that's just weird. Right. There's more to health than our physio physiological well being, but it is a super, super important piece to highlight. Does right. that make sense? Yeah, totally. What are, what are, I guess some, actually like physiologic physiological things that happen when we sit and don't take the initiative to stand up and don't stand up when we work like I know a huge fad um or standing desk right now I know that's one thing me and you even like to use a lot at work um a cool oh there's so many cool inventions about this I don't know if you've heard about this I actually saw I think I texted you about this but I saw somebody had a standing desk and underneath had like a small treadmill yes that they can yes. walk as they're working and I've also seen like a working desk built, but it's like a bicycle. And so you can pedal as you're working, which I thought was interesting too. But what are some things that physically happen when we sit down too much? And what are some physical, physical benefits from choosing to stand and choosing to uh, not sit down during moments when we typically would have to sit? There is several clinical studies that show a, a whole gamut of either positive things from omitting the sit or negative things from too much sedentary behavior. I mean, some of them can be, uh, for example, sitting too much can decrease skeletal muscle mass or bone density, or mm. it can cause like 
it's one of the leading causes of back pain. I mean, back right. pain is so diverse and complex. Right. But um, and a lot of people experience back pain. I mean, it's like like the number one or number two thing that brings people into the doc. Listen to some of these statistics that in. 1970 to the 1980s, only 2 to 5% of our population was obese. Okay, this was about 30, 40 years ago. Only 2 to 5 of our population was obese. Okay. Now, it's between 20 to 25%. And again, no. quote, this is not a one variable equation. Like right, there's right, more right. to it there's when it comes to our diet, when it comes to our sleeping habits. I mean, this is just a a symptom of our unhealthy culture, but our sedentary behavior is a very big attribute in this, a very big variable in this. So that would be one out of every four to five people are now considered obese, not even overweight or not just considered, oh, I have 20 pounds I need to shed. This is like obese and come, and when you introduce obesity to the equation, now you're introducing a lot more potential for a lot of harm to be done. Listen to this. It's not just affecting us either. It's affecting our kids too. 80% 80% of high schoolers do not even get 60 minutes of high, um, of physical activity a day. That's four that out of every five because of video games, because of just isolation from 2020. All of these things, kids are a lot more sedentary sitting on their screens than going outside, playing football, playing basketball, whatever that entails. Yeah. So, again... It's a lot more complex. I don't want to just simplify it, but I do want to heighten really just the awareness of how much we sit and just some of the things we can do about it. Yeah. No, I, I, I love that. And, and I think that's even something I've learned from you. Alex is very good at doing this. He always finds little places to stand up and when you typically would sit in team meetings or something like that. And I found myself doing that. I find myself a lot now when I'm working on something or, you know, working on my laptop to take those initiatives to stand up because it really just gives, like you said, it gives me better mental clarity, helps me feel more awake. It just lets me move because I get so much energy just like balled up that I need to get out so I can get my thoughts moving a little more. Um, man, as as the real Slim Shady said, please stand up, you know. Are you familiar with that term? I do know that song. The real Slim Shady, please stand up. <laughs> um, so what do we do about this, Alex? Like what what are some suggestions that you have? There's there's a couple more mantras that I think yeah, yeah. would be helpful to people. Um, so what do we do about this? What do we do about this? This pandemic of sitting. So, <laughs> sitting or sinning? <laughs> Both, honestly. That's hilarious. I'm not, equa- the same. I'm not equating They're sitting to sinning same. at all. But Hard to sin. Hard, okay. hard to sin when you're walking towards <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Here's what I'll say. Remember, there's more to health than just one of these habits. It's not just habit in its entirety. We need to look at health holistically, meaning there's more to health than just our physical bodies. There's more to health than our spiritual lives. There's more to health than our relational relationships. Health is holistic, meaning... Uh, Yes, I do have a standing desk at home so that I can stand for most of the days. But when I get tired, I'm going to sit down. I don't have the bicycle thing or the treadmill underneath my desk. Not talking about optimizing every, I mean, prioritizing every single thing when it comes to movement where now I'm, I'm taking away from the other habits. But I am going to do some of these things that I've listed out here. For example, I do utilize a standing desk. I do try to remove optional sitting. I bought a push mower instead of a, um, a sitting lawn mower just right, to increase right, right. the steps. That's great. Um, taking walks, taking my dogs out for walks, playing with my kids. Um, we will legit clean our house ourselves rather than paying someone to come do that. Right. So just those small little uh, – another super common one that – I try to do is park in the back of the parking lot and rather the front of the parking lot just to get those extra steps in using the stairs versus the um, elevator, stuff like that. Just super simple things because with the increase of technology, I mean, most technological advancements are something to make our lives easier or more simple or more convenient or comfortable. For example, an elevator, an escalator, um, parking spots in the front, all that stuff. So really just being intentional aware of, okay, think of how sedentary our lives can be versus our ancestors from generations ago, they had to ride horses, they had to walk, they had to clean their clothes manually. There was a lot more physically intense labor. They had to um, wash their own clothes by hand, all that stuff. Where now, with the technological revolution just changing everything, we can do something, we can pretty much do everything just by sitting on our butts and clicking buttons on our phones, and people can do everything for us. So we just need to be intentional about removing the sedentary behaviors and being intentional about sitting. Think about this. You know, a Fitbit or 
I mean, Fitbit's the most common one, but this was more popular several years ago. Where, oh, how many steps are you getting today? Oh, yeah. I got to get my steps, or oh, I didn't, I didn't close my move rings on the on your Apple Watch, which is great. Those are, those are um, right. enforcing positive, physically active behaviors. But think about it. We are a species designed to move. We are a species designed to work. We are a species not designed to sit, but to actually use our physio- physiological bodies to move with a purpose. We now have inventions to track the thing we are designed to do, which I kind of think is counterintuitive because, Never wait a minute, that, yeah. you ne- you ne- we shouldn't even be worried about getting our steps in because we're designed to get those steps in in the first place. But we've come to a point where we're, we've decreased that behavior so much right. that now we need to bring awareness to it by, oh, did you get your steps in? Did That's you close so that move ring? Yeah. Because we are such a sedentary behavior. I've always thought that was super interesting. Yeah, and I also think um, movement is a luxury. Like, you know how some people would wish that, they you know, something happens or they're, they have a defect at birth or, yeah. you know, they go through some type of tragedy and movement's taken away from them. Yeah. Like, movement is a, is a luxury, and, and I don't want to take it for granted. And, and th- I think that's the thing for me, parking farther away, taking the stairs and moments like that. It's like, yeah, of course it's going to be a little bit more difficult and require more energy, but, man, it's a privilege just to get – just to get to move and just to get to go outside. And I know like one thing that happened in COVID for a lot of people, for example, is I think it just allowed them to go on walks. Yes. And can you think about how beneficial that is for you mentally, how beneficial that is for you physically, how, how beneficial that is for your heart and your soul, just to go outside and slow down and to walk and to be outside. And, and I don't want to take that for granted. You know, there are two things I want to say to that because everything you just said was gold. In our team meetings, because we work together, right. our boss asked us, hey, what is one thing that you want to bring from 2020 into 2021? So context, we're in 2021 right now, seven months in, we're in July right now. But at the beginning of 2021, our boss asked us, hey, what is one thing you want to bring from 2020 into 2021? And I still remember my answer. I do too, yeah. My answer was, I want to continue to go on walks. walks. Yeah, I remember saying that. Because we, my wife and I walked so much during quarantine, but with just what you said, there's something recentering about that. And again, yeah. I, this podcast is not all about walks or not all about just running or stuff like that but it is a caveat of it that's important to say because like you said there are other elements of walking that help not just physiologically but mentally relationally socially i mean my wife and i go on walks and occasionally and actually decompress yes unplug break down our day connect relationally it's such a beneficial behavior the second thing i wanted to quickly say was one statistic that absolutely blew my mind when i read it and this is not something that's recent this is a um several year old study but i shared this with a couple friends and they're like oh my gosh so from the mayo clinic or the mayo i always say mayo the mayo clinic the mayonnaise clinic the (laughs) the clinic that produces mayonnaise (laughs) the mayo clinic um, which is a front runner when when it comes to all things health. Right. They produced a study, and this study released that sitting, l- listen to this, sitting for 10 hours a day can cancel out 90% of the positive effects of a one-hour workout to a six-minute jog. Let me break that down. You do a 60-minute class before work. So you go to the 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. class, whether it's an Orange Theory or a CrossFit class or a Burn Body Boot Camp or you're just hitting the, hitting the weights, hitting the stair climb or whatever it is. You work out for 60 minutes. It's a great workout. Then the rest of that day, you go shower, you get in your car, you drive 30 minutes to work. You have a desk job. You sit from 9 to 5. You sit 30 minutes back home, maybe sit in traffic 45 minutes. You get home to work. You see your kids. Yeah, have fun. You sit back down for dinner. You eat. You clean up the dishes. You sit on your couch, watch a show, put your kids to bed, go back in bed, sitting for longer than 10 hours, eight hours at work, 30 minutes, 30 minutes to tra- traffic. You sit another hour at home. You sit for 10 hours. Your 60-minute workout did not happen. The 90% of the physiological positive effects as far as mental clarity, all the hormone, all the, uh, all the different uh, um, positive effects when it comes to your blood and your nervous system and all those different things literally cancel out down to if you only jogged for six minutes. Wow. That's, how, that's like the, that's the damaging effects that sedentary behavior can do. Right. And that was from um, a Mayo Clinic study that was released, I think, probably five or six years ago at this point. Wow. So – 
I mean, I, I, I try to work out before work. I mean, I probably work out five to six days a week for 60 minutes, but a lot of times I find myself sitting for five, six, seven yeah, hours just because sure. our culture primes us to sit in every environment we find ourselves in yeah. that we need to be intentional about not being sedentary. Yeah, I man, thought that was just mind blowing. That is mind blowing. And, and just to encourage everybody, find those small moments, find those small areas in your life when you find yourself sitting and you could choose to stand otherwise, or find those moments when... Um, you could choose to take the shorter route and take the longer route and be thankful for the fact that you can move. But one thing that I do love about this, this habit is it, it's move often mm. and it's not exercise often. That's good. So I like that you're encouraging people to move and not encouraging people to necessarily, you know, go on this like marathon run every day right. to burn 5,000 calories right. and get the six pack and dream body that you've always wanted. I, I love the fact that movement is connected to mental clarity and yes. mental health. And that's connected to having, you know, healthy spiritually and, and to be internally healthy as well. So why did you name this habit move often and not exercise often? What, what What's the purpose of, of that intentional language there? That is a brilliant point you bring up. The reason it's not exercise often is because the foundational and fundamental habit that we need to normalize and habitualize into our daily rhythms is not exercise, but movement. Where yes, I am a undergrad student of exercise science. Like I went to school to study exercise. Could you imagine if you had like a movement science degree? (laughs) Well... I'm about to I'm about to whip that out on the no dance kidding. floor next time. I'm like, I got a BA in movement science. <laughs> he must have went to school for movement science. That's hilarious. The reason it's not exercise um exercise often is because movement is the beam that holds up exercise. Exercise is a subcategory of movement because if we have sedentary behavior and then try to slap on our exercise habits on top of that, yeah. we are firing a cannon out of a rowboat. We're just going to tip over where if we have consistent daily uh, functional movement into our repertoire on a daily basis and then we slap on exercise and try to habitualize that habit on top, now we're setting ourselves up for success. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. And so we've been intentional about that language. You've been intentional about that language of of prioritizing movement, making sure that it's defined and and it's the top priority, but then you still have exercise. Yep. So could you just kind of explain like where does exercise fall on the scale within movement and what is exercise, why we should prioritize it if so, and and can you just hit on that a little bit? So habit number three is move often. If you don't remember anything else from this podcast, remember this. When we move, we improve. That's it. The reason why movement is so important is because when we move, we improve. Because when when movement and exercise underneath that, which is a subcategory of movement, um, movement is the big overall arching umbrella. When we move, it's a stressor on the body. So whether it's a bicep curl, we're running a marathon, taking a walk, um, standing versus sitting, they are all technically stressors on the body. We're stressing the nervous system. We're stre- stressing the uh, musculoskeletal system. We're stressing the respiratory system. It's a stressor. But when there is a stressor signal to the body, when we de-stress our body and sleep well, habit number one, and recover, our body actually builds up stronger, more resilient, more robust, even better than what we were before to that stressor. Okay. So the reason why move, moving often is so important is because our body is going to improve the more moving we do. So the reason we do that is because, okay, now our body un- is, is under this mode of, okay, I'm getting stressed and now I'm going to come back even bigger and stronger. Exercise is just the intentional application of that. So walking, yes, is going to help, but it's not, it may not expedite the process of getting fit or losing 10 pounds or whatever. That's what exercise is because exercise is simply the repeated planned, intentional, consistent application of movement, right? It's not, oh my gosh, I just repped out 30, 30, uh, 30 presses of shoulder press on accident. It's intentional, it's planned, and it's designed to help improve some sort of aspect of your body, right. okay? But when it comes to that though, I am a big proponent on moving functionally, 
Because when I say, hey, we need to move often, it's not just mindless movement, it's meaningful movement. Meaningful movement is functional movement. And all I mean by functional movement are the movements our bodies were designed to do. Because part of becoming truly healthy, part of the mantra of Holo Health is summoning back our primal roots, summoning back to what our bodies were designed to do because our bodies were designed to do what they were designed to do, which is be human. Going back to um, mental clarity, peace, having the ability to take walks because our bodies have so much more potential than we're even tapping into. So when it comes to that, when we when we utilize functional movement on a day-to-day um, basis when it comes to movement, but then also the application of exercise, we are only going to improve. And the functional movements is simply squatting, lunging, hinging, pressing, bracing, throwing, all those movements you find out in nature naturally that there really isn't a representative in the gym, but there is a natural application out in the real in the real world. For example, there there is a very minimal real life application to a leg extension machine, but if you're going to drop your phone and your remote on the um on the floor and pick it up and hinge with your hips with your back straight and the weight in your heels and a tight core there's a real life application of that right, right? and right, that's right, what right. we mean by functional movement so when you find a coach or find a a system that's going to help you learn functional movement when it comes to oh I'm going to whenever I deadlift it's simply keeping the best and safest and most efficient um, system or mode of picking something up off the ground and standing up with it, when you learn that recruitment pattern, you're set for the rest of your life. Because it's not just an exercise program, it's teaching you how to move well. So there's so right. much overlap in that. Right. So what would you recommend, like you just did with moving, with some little tips to find here and there that in your daily life, some little tips, how would you recommend people to exercise more? What's what's like your recommendation for, hey, maybe try this or try these things, or in light of knowing that you need to move more, um, what would you recommend in light of this exercise thing? So two things come to mind. One is you got to know what you want. What are your goals? Okay. Because it's different if like, oh, hey, I actually want to train for something. That's more performance. Or maybe it's a body composition. I want to lose 10 pounds. Or maybe it's just a health thing. I want to be healthier intrinsically so I can play with my grandkids later on down the road. Because hear me now, there is not one right way to exercise. Whether you are a CrossFitter, whether you are a Orange Theory person, whether you like to do long distance runs, whether you like to do yoga, whether you like to just work out in your garage by yourself, do bodybuilding, powerlifting, whatever you like to do, which was the second thing I was going to say, the most important thing is enjoyment. You need to enjoy what you do. If you dread going to the gym, if you dread exercising, you are never going to sustain that because that is one of the most important things when it comes to true health. It needs to be sustainable and you are not going to sustain anything you don't enjoy. Okay. So you need to find something you enjoy and you need to find out what your goals are, whether it's performance, body composition, or overall health, because that's going to also help you direct in that route you want to go. But here's what I would, here's what I would admonish you to do, encourage you to do is I would encourage you to think about what you're doing in the gym and how it translates to out of the gym. Because if what you are doing in the gym has no translation to what you're doing outside the gym, I would rethink some things. Because the reason I work out five to six days a week is because what it allows me to do outside of the gym, right? right? It gives me energy. It gives me focus. It builds community and relationships outside. It how it gives me um, the strength needed to play with my kids. It gives me the stamina I need to go underwater and play with my um, two kids in the pool. It allows me so much more freedom to not get out of breath and I can carry my groceries into the fourth floor of my apartment without getting out of breath and I only have to find apartments on the first floor because I, I, I have to worry about going upstairs. When your body is resilient and robust enough to be able to tackle all life's demands, that's what's called increasing fitness, and that's what exercise should be. Exercise should increase your fitness to allow you to tackle all life's demands. Does that make sense? Right. So I think even there, you kind of brought in like a new term. So how how do we separate? How do we separate exercise and how do we separate fitness? Can we bring some definition to that? So great question. So the definition of exercise, there are four main 
components to it. It's planned, structured, repetitive, and intentional. It's planned in the fact that it's not random. It's structured in the fact that there are specific time domains and rep schemes. It's repetitive, meaning like identical or similar movements are repeated in a specific muscle group. And then it's intentional as it's done on purpose. So your exercise, think of it as your training program for life. But when it comes to fitness, fitness in its most technical, clunky, scientific way, terms simply means it's work capacity across broad time and modal domains. No one is Whoa. ever going to remember that. Whoa. Okay. No one is ever going to remember that. Here's what it means. When you're able to tackle all of life's demands, what do I mean by that? Life might demand you when there's a robber stealing your grandma's purse to sprint after him as fast as you can, 30 you seconds down and pummel him down to to, uh, get your grandma's purse again. I do anything. You can for do her. that because you're fit enough. Or now there's a TV falling on your little nephew, and you have to lift that TV off. Oh. You're, you're strong enough to do that. Or you're I able would. to. You're Not able the to. Nephew. <laughs> you're able to push my mo. grandma and my nephew. <laughs> you got to save your family. <laughs> You're, or you need to push mow three acres of uh, grass and you don't have the stamina to do that. Now with exercise, you can. Or it's the flexibility to touch your toes or tie your shoe. It's anything that life is going to demand from you. You now have the physical skills to do that. Okay. But exercise is the intentional program to help you get there. Okay. So when it comes to exercise and fitness, fitness is basically what I'm doing in the gym is helping me do what I want to do outside of the gym. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the analogy I always like to use is think of this analogy. Think, think it's me and Matt and we're about to race. Okay. Oh, it'd be over. <laughs> it'd be over quick. But this race is not just a, hey, we're going to run down. We have to carry an 100-pound sandbag. And okay. I know your – back what I said. And I know I your love with – I what I said. I know your love with the 100-pound sandbag. Matt, tell them about your love with the 100-pound sandbag. So, oh, my goodness. Alex – sometimes I'll go to Alex. Alex has this little uh, garage gym. And it's nice. I love it. But there's one aspect of it that I do not love, and it's this giant rogue sandbag that he always programs into the workout <laughs> that we do. And here's the thing. Okay, I'll be honest here. No shame. Alex is an extremely fit dude. It's the reason why he built this whole thing that we're doing. I am a very s slightly subpar average fit person. <laughs> That's not true. And so – Alex is slinging the sandbag like it's just a, a Ziploc bag full of nothing. <laughs> and over here for me, this hundred pound, it's a hundred pound sandbag like that. This is obnoxious in the first place. Can we just acknowledge that? And then when I pick it up, it's like almost peak exertion to get this thing <laughs> over my, it, it's like just enough exertion that I know I can do it, but it's also enough exertion to make me feel like I might, like break something as I'm picking it up and slinging it over my shoulder. So I get so tired of this 100-pound sandbag. You don't have PTSD, do you? I do. Every time I see any big red object, I get nervous. <laughs> That's hilarious. So now we have this 100-pound sandbag, and we need to race 100 yards. So we're at the start of a football field. We need to race, and we need to travel 100 yards with a 100-pound sandbag as fast as we can. Okay. Let's say you beat me because you're much better than I am, okay? It takes you 10 seconds. It takes me 15 seconds. Now, we can classify you as fitter because when it comes to fitness, there's actually an equation when you go back to your old handy-dandy physics formula as far as power and intensity is, is equally related. It's force times distance divided by time. Your force is... Um, the 100 pounds, the distance is 100 yards, and your time is 10 seconds, you do that average, and now you're averaging, I don't know, it's like two, 300 units of power, where me, it's taken me a little bit longer, so I have, a, I have a decreased level of power, we're able to measure it now. But when it comes to fitness, it always doesn't, it doesn't always look like a <laughs> football field sandbag race between Alex and Matt, right? right. It may be a military two-minute push-up test. It may be climbing a rock at a rock wall gym. It might be uh, um, a... About, hey, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, let, let's focus on that one for a second. Let's Matt, and all, Matt and I are good friends. We've also spent time outside of the gym where <laughs> we went to a rock climbing gym, and Matt has spent a lot of time 
um, <laughs> climbing in his days back in college. And Matt is a really, really good rock climber, and I will give him that for sure. Thank you. We're just, not competitive. I just wanted y'all to know that. That's <laughs> it. Just, I just needed that that little victory. So basically what I'm saying is there's a lot of different um, tests that we could be tested as far as a max push-up test, climbing a, uh, a rock wall, whether it's uh, going on a marathon or um, a powerlifting meet, an Ironman, all these different things um, when it comes to the athletic arena. When we're able to do all of those at a, at a pretty high level, that's when we start to um, that's when we start to find fitness because each of those are a slice of the pie is what I like to say for when it comes to a two minute military push up test when it comes to climbing a rock wall for thirty minutes when it comes to running a four hundred meter sprint when it comes to a powerlifting meet or an Ironman those are all slices of the fitness pie but when we can do all of those things now we're increasing fitness which is going to be able to better help us tackle life's demands yeah does that make sense yeah totally and I love that and again. We, we want you to move and we want you to be truly healthy. And, and even though sometimes fitness and exercise and movement, it might contribute to your six pack. It might contribute to your Buffalo biceps. It might contribute to the body that you've always wanted. And we want that for you, but we don't want you to gain that and get that and not be internally healthy yes, and, and not be good. relationally healthy that's and good. we want you to be truly healthy and that's why we're intentional with some of this language and that's why we're doing this in the first place so so Alex you have any closing remarks today this has been a lot of fun I, I know you've you've honestly been a huge influence to me in defining those little moments in my daily rhythms where I can get up and I can stand and I can move and it's just been helpful for me so you have anything as we close today I have one final thought, and then I need to remind everybody of something that we actually are still standing, just like we, we are. said at the beginning we of the totally podcast. Are. We have a minute to sit. I do want to go back really quick and say the three mantras that I like to remember because yeah, they kind of they're rhyme. Helpful, they kinda, they're, they're sticky. They're helpful, yeah, just like you said. And then I will say one final thought because I do share this in the book, but um, it's kind of been my uh, my – mo for the past nine years but when it comes to the sedentary behavior the movement we need to move often the three like sitting mantras is how i coined them um the first one is omit the sit it's it's sticky it's weird it's kind of silly but it's memorable and portable right whenever there's optional sitting remove it omit it so omit the sit the second one is stand when you can which kind of piggybacks off of sitting where just like we're doing now, right. we admit to sit and we can stand when we can. Or if you can't stand, the third one is more on the floor. Yeah, meaning- I like that one. <laughs> Get your head out of the gutter, listeners. And when we actually sit on the floor, it actually helps us so much more orthopedically when it comes to our hips, our flexibility, our thoracic mobility of our upper body. I mean, our, just even our – I mean, my adductors in my, um, in my thighs are so tight. But when I sit on the ground, it naturally stretches them. And if I spent more time on the floor, it would only help help them so yeah. omit the sit stay when you can more on the floor those are the three little sticky little sitting sedentary mantras that i like to kind of remember but the last final takeaway that i'll share with you is the one i share in the book that i really tell people as much as i can because this one truly is memorable and portable because memorable is portable and portable is memorable yeah. meaning you can take it everywhere you go right that when it comes to exercise i don't f- truly I don't follow this super complex, hard to understand, physically demanding, time demanding, rigid exercise program. When I walk into the gym, I have one goal and one goal only. It's to lift something heavy and get out of breath. That's it. When it comes to increasing your fitness levels, when it comes to helping what you do in the gym for outside of the gym, tackling all life's demands, it simply comes down to lift lift something heavy and get out of breath. And those are my two checklists I have every single day. Did I lift something heavy and did I get out of breath? Yeah. Meaning, yeah, maybe one day it's a heavy squat. Maybe one day it's a heavy bench. Maybe one day it's a heavy power clean. And then did I get out of breath? I'm going to vary those as much as I possibly can. And that's my one goal. So that's what I would encourage people to do. If they don't know where to start, if they don't know what to do, I would encourage them, hey, did you lift something heavy? Did you get out of breath? But if if you're like, hey, I want to take this next level, I would really encourage you to find a coach or a gym or someone like myself who's been doing this uh, maybe a little bit farther along in the journey than you and just ask them if um, they can help you because under proper guidance and coaching you really can't take this to the next level but when it comes to the just the most normal 
foundational pillar. I would say we need to move well and move often. We need to lift something heavy and get out of breath so that we can be the healthiest version of ourselves. Yeah, man. Well, I love it. I feel motivated. Motion is lotion, baby. Yes. And rest is rust. Rest is rust. And I'm excited to get out. I'm excited to move. So if, if you're listening today, hey, get out, get outside, do some movement, go for a walk, enjoy nature, enjoy trees and get out, stand up, move around, break out your favorite dance move. And we will see you next podcast episode. See you guys. Thanks, Matt.